it's time. Round 23, Carlton Collingwood at the MCG. Sunday at 3.20 p.m. Finally, an opportunity to play finals football. Not that we haven't had the opportunity to play finals football over the last month, but this is the last chance. It's fascinating what's gone down over the last few weeks. We entered the final four-game stretch of the season, needing to win one more game to just clinch the spot. And we lose three in a row, and we get to this final hurdle against the Pies. It's absolutely poetic. And I've spent a lot of this week, I've actually struggled to put this together. This is the third or fourth time I'm recording this. I've struggled to really put my words together and my thoughts. I found myself getting really introspective this week. Just looking back on the journey, I'll never forget 2019, early 2019, thinking this is going to be the year where we turn it around. I need to come home to Melbourne for two reasons. Number one, I've got to chase the dream. I've got to build the channel, go all in on it. At that stage, it was just a Facebook page and an Instagram page and an um, I wanted to give it a red hot crack. And then on the other hand, I did not want to miss out on the moment when we turned it around as a football club, <laughs> how wrong I was because that turnaround didn't happen until this year, really. I think no matter what happens on Sunday, I think 2022 will be remembered as the year where we actually started turning the dial and moving forward properly uh, and really imp showing improvement. Uh, 2019 ended up being poor. We finished the season relatively okay um 2020 was very disappointing very disappointing um 2021 i thought was even more disappointing i know that they were covid affected years but 18 clubs had covid affected years you know and so did all the top eight teams of those years um and then we get to 2022 and finally we see the standards lift you know the change within the club off field, on field standards. And, you know, this year's been really enjoyable. It has. It has been really enjoyable. We've seen 12 wins. <laughs> like the last time we saw 12 wins was a long time ago. Um, but it really all comes down to this Sunday. It's been an, um, it's been an amazing build up. Um, everywhere I go, the conversations are there. Uh, I overhear them in restaurants, in cafes while I'm waiting for coffee. Um, colleagues know, like I'm really built up. I haven't slept properly all week. I have not had a good night's sleep all week. Can't stop thinking about it. I'm wired. I know it's not finals football, but there really is a final feeling about this week because I know, I think I know what to expect from the atmosphere in the crowd. I was at the Richmond final in 2013 I'll never forget the roar of that day, ever, never in my life. And I'm very confident that the atmosphere will eclipse that day. I really am. There's just so much at stake. And we've had to sit through and endure so much and be so patient um, just to get a chance. Like, we're not even talking about a premiership. Like, I'm very clear and I'm very much okay with the notion of we're not winning the flag this year. I can, I, I can, I can understand that. I can get over that and I'm not surprised by that. And, and that's okay. Maybe my standards have dipped, whatever, but I really would be disappointed, really disappointed. I'd be devastated if we missed out on finals this year because of what we were able to do this season, because of the improvement we're able to make this season. And yes, I know there will always be next year and the dust will always settle and we'll always get over it. But why in the world would we talk about next year when we can do it now, when we can do it on Sunday with a group that is so capable on Sunday of getting the job done? They are more than capable of getting the job done. Last week, I think we found something. I know that we lost. I know it was heartbreaking. Um, the pessimists will say that the emotional toll of the loss will, you know, mean that we can't win this week and it's probably we've played our grand final. I disagree with that. Um, but I think we found something. We, we found something we had discovered early this season, and that was the standard of how we attack each contest and how we work for each other. I think we found it again. And I think if we bring the same mental application as what we brought against the Ds to the Pies, I think we're good enough to win the game. Does that mean we're going to win the game? No, it doesn't. But <clears throat> I think 
more times than not, you bring that type of effort into a game, you, you win more games than what you lose. Um, you know, it's, it's a very, it's, it, it's a very special occasion because for a lot of people who, who are younger, who are born in the 2000s or born in the, you know, early to late nineties, haven't got really much to, to latch onto. We latch onto this hope that we were given by our parents and by our family members from the generation before about this great club, you know, but just because we were a great club once upon a time doesn't mean that's why we're absolutely going to be a great club now because it's a whole new, it's a whole new regime. We've got to put the work in to earn the right. Um, I look at these players. It's fascinating. We have a lot of memories now with these players. We've got some serious history with them that from, you know, Cripps when he first got to the club and, and Sam Doherty, and then really the beginning of the new era, you know, starting in the 2015 draft with Wiedering, Mackay, Kerno, Jack Silvani. I know Cunningham's not playing, but but that draft. And then moving on, you know, you got young Zach Fisher, you know, you got Lockie O'Brien, Paddy Dow, um, these youngsters. Um, Caleb Marchbank was one of the early parts of this this group as well. And and this this is the biggest game of all of their careers, all every single one of them. I can't think of a player that's playing this week who who isn't playing in the biggest game of his life. Maybe Zach Williams, if he plays. Maybe he's played in a bigger game. Um, but this is the everything we've built in this big rebuild, this five-year plan that turned into a seven-year plan. <laughs> everything we've built comes to a halt on Sunday. And we're going to really find out, obviously, whether we're good enough. And the, the beauty of it is it's so binary. We're either good enough or we're not good enough. And that's just the way it's going to go. Um, and I'm so excited. This is literally why I came home. I came home to Australia because I wanted to be here when the turnaround happened. I didn't want to miss out. I wanted to experience it live. Um, and it's a, it's, it's consumed me. It's consumed all of us. I don't know how many of you hold on just because of the fact that we had the dream as a kid and we haven't been able to feel it and experience it. So we just hold on. I wonder what would happen if we won the flag Would the, would we care just as much? We'll find out one day. Um, but this is really the ultimate. Uh, I, I just, I'm watching everyone. I'm just observing everyone online and the, the sentiment and even all the conversations on the phone that I'm having. It's such an exciting time to be a supporter because it's a relevant game. It's not round 23 as a dead rubber. I mean, if you look at 12 months ago, we played Port Adelaide and we had 19 straight goals kicked on us. That was a devastating, devastating day. So fast track, 12 months, look at what's happened. It's awesome. It really is. It's awesome what's happened, but this is what was expected to happen. We, this isn't anything new. Finals is not a new conversation. I know that we're trying to protect ourselves a little bit, but finals is not a new conversation. Finals was on the agenda last year and it was a failure. Finals was on the agenda in 2020 and it was a failure. You know, um, And if we fail this week, we fail this week. We're very upset. The dust will settle, life will go on, and the sun will rise the next day. Um, and we'll sit with that sinking feeling for the entire preseason. Very much like what we did last year. That sinking feeling of what the fuck is going on with this club. So I think it's a little different now. I think we have a bit more faith in the fact that we have a better program in place than what we, what we have had with this group. Um, but I don't want to talk about next year. What, why talk about what could happen next year? You can't guarantee. You don't know which teams are going to improve. You don't know which teams are going to decline. Um, if anything, life has taught me is that you just can't expect anything the year after to happen. Um, why do that when the opportunity is in front of you right now? And that's just what I hope um, the guys bring this week. You know, we spoke to Nathan Buckley this week. It was a great conversation. Um, he is a beacon of knowledge. And I love it. You, you sponge it up. I'm, I'm always looking to learn from, from people like that or anyone that's got that knowledge to pass on. And what can you really control as a fan? Nothing. And then on the inside, what can they really control? I mean, they might get a bit of an emotional boost from the atmosphere in the crowd, but at the end of the day, they've got to focus on the three or four things. Each and every one of them, they've got to focus on executing the three or four things that make us play our best footy. Um, 
on a really simple level, if we hunt the pies like we hunted the D's last week, pretty sure that's enough to get the job done. Um, the pies have lost the contested possession battle um, consistently over the last few weeks and they've still found a way to win games. They've been remarkable. I mean, their, their winning streak has been nothing short of phenomenal and you've got to, you've got to take that into account. They're not going to just roll over and let us win the game. I think this is going to be a really tight one, no matter how well we play. I think this will be a really tight one because they're, they're fearless, the pies. And as much as on our side, we have that, <clears throat> we've got more to lose because if we lose, we're done. The season's dead. Um, the pies, yeah, top. They, they would love to play top four, but I don't think that's in the. I don't know if that's really in the back of their mind. They just, they just play with this fearlessness, and they play on the emotion. They ride the emotion, and that's kind of got me thinking: Do we need to get emotional? Because if we get emotional, does that play into Collingwood's hands? You know, what's the balance between playing with emotion this week and sticking to structures this week? Um, so that's. You know, those are some of my thoughts about it. Um, but ultimately, it's it's absolutely everything for all of us that latch onto and support the way we do. We, we we invest a lot. It's not just emotion. It's spirit. It's finances. It's time. Time is the greatest asset that we all have. And we invest it so much into this thing that we have zero control over. You can call it madness, but I wouldn't have it any other way. I wouldn't want to do it with anyone else other than the people that are in this community. So... Um, it's great. In terms of the team, looks like Zach Williams will be available. I hope Chair is available. What do you do? Do you do you drop Stocker, Noons, O'Brien, one of the one of the small forwards? I have no idea. I, I, I guess I'm probably more of the school authority in that Zach Williams is good enough to play in this week if he's fit. If, he, if he's fit and they can account for the fact that he'll get through the game, I think he's good enough because I think he's good enough under pressure. Um, I think you just got to get your best players out there on the day. Uh, Chera, the other thing I'm mindful of is if you bring them both in, are they a little bit underdone? Are you risking it too much? But at the end of the day, this is what you go and get these players for, for, you know, for success, for finals football. So I have no idea what's going to happen with team selection. It doesn't really matter. If I'm, if I'm being dead honest, it doesn't even matter. It doesn't matter who shows up there on Sunday. They all have to bring the right mentality and they all have to get the job done and they have to play a game. Like we're really going to find out a lot about which ones, which one of them or which, which group of them are going to really be able to handle the heat moving forward. It's the ultimate pressure. There's going to be 90-ish, maybe more, thousand people at the MCG um, it's going to be deafening. They won't be able to hear a thing. Um, and there will be, you know, this will be a learning experience either way for them, for sure. Um, I know people might not want to hear that, but that's just the truth. The more of these situations you can put yourself in, uh, the more chances you have to actually being able to figure it out. So those are my thoughts on changes. For the pies, looks like to go in and Ginevan will play don't really care again i don't really care who they bring to play um we have a considerable amount of play layers into this team that were not there last time you know harry Mackay, jacob weedering you know obviously he got hurt early in the game last time mark pitt in it those are serious positions right there um zach williams will potentially be another one of those um and i remember the last game i remember it clearly i remember leaving that game saying if we had three or four more of our pieces, we win that game. I remember it. I also remember very clearly, we were the hot stuff at the time. We were eight and two. And the Pies, I believe it was, if it was the, wasn't the first, it might've been the second win of their win streak. It was very early in the win streak. There were still question marks about them. They were still playing the rebuild card. Um, and I remember that game so clearly. I remember the siren going. I remember being devastated because we nearly won the game, but it was a bit of a bullshit comeback. And I remember saying, We'll beat them again 100% next time, no matter what, as long as we get our certain key players back. Um, I feel like we go into this game on Sunday as the hunters. I don't think they're going to be hunting us. We have to go and get them because they're the ones that have proven that they've had a better season. That's the truth. So um, I'm very excited to see what the fear of the fear of losing it all and the fear of our season ending 
does to the way we play. Are we going to be able to rise to the occasion or are we, or, or are we not? You know, um, the most exciting part about this week is undoubtedly the thought of the final siren or a goal that sort of seals it. Um, I have this image in my head of the raw making everything shake. I'll never forget Juddy's goal. Something like that. Um, that's what I'm hoping for. On the other end, it's the ultimate devastation. It's it's really one or the other. There's no in-between here. You're We're either going to be unbelievably ecstatic, united, relieved that we finally took the step forward to playing finals football, or we're going to be absolutely devastated because we would have lost four in a row and all of that. But I don't want to focus too much on what happens when we lose. I'll deal with it when it happens. I just want to go in there with, you know, full of hope, full of belief, and hopefully the energy that the crowd brings can just help give them, I don't know, 4% more energy or whatever it is. Whatever that little margin is, I hope that we can, um, you know, provide that for them. Um, but irrespective, it's been, been a pleasure to cover the season. If this is the last game that I'm previewing for the year, then it's been an absolute pleasure. And thanks for being along for the ride. Um, but we're coming back. We're playing finals football. I'm confident we're going to beat the Pies on Sunday. And um, we'll go from there. What about you? How are you feeling about this week? What are some of the thoughts that have gone through your mind? What's consuming you this week? Is it nostalgic? Is it emotional? Um, most of the people I speak to are emotional, just like me. I'm pretty, I'm pretty wound up. I can't get my mind off it. Um, I haven't had too many of these experiences in my life, so I'm super amped for it. But uh, share with us in the comments below how are you feeling about this week, and um, will you be there? Where are you sitting? And and you know, I really look forward to it. Have a great one. Enjoy the build up and go the mighty blues. Yeah.